Hi, I'm Louise Wallace. On the show tonight, actor, producer and barrister Blair Strang talks about his devilish new venture. And later, the wonderfully talented Alison Bruce gives us a visitor from Hawke's Bay's take on Chekhov. Hi everyone, great to have your company and welcome to the opening night of Opening Night. Yep, pretty much anything that has an opening night is talked about here. We'll talk to well-known actors about their current and future projects and just get to know them a bit better and share some of their stories. Because if there's one thing I've learned from working with actors, they tell a good yarn and they love reminiscing about their time on stage. That is both the good times and the bad. But first, you will no doubt remember him from his six years on Shorty playing Rangi Hedamaya. And you may not know he is a successful barrister and has now started his own theatre company called Sapphire Productions. They open at the Pump House Takapuna on June 7 with their latest production, Morning Star. Welcome, Blair Strang. <laughs> Thank How you. How are you, mate? Yeah, great yeah, to yeah, see yeah, you. You too, Lewis. Well, great to see you too yeah, as well. Yeah, it has actually been quite a while because you were briefly involved with Tadpole Productions. Briefly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, you were a you know, very busy, busy lawyer. Yeah, well, I've been practicing family law now for about ten years. So mm. it's, um, and that's uh, well, you know, it's it's never easy. It's always yeah. dealing with uh, emotional turmoils. But um, I've always kept the hand in the um, acting and um, you know theatre and television business. I also, you know, did a series on um, TV One, Nothing Trivial, which was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. With, a, with a good crew. It's funny, you know, when you introduce me, you say Rangi Hiramaya. That never leaves you, right? I know, I know. <laughs> well, we'll talk about that. Um, but the thing about, you know, I talk about you're a, a barrister because, quite honestly, as an actor, you also have to have a real job, don't you? I, well, it's otherwise you won't survive. That's and, right. And um, you know, I had to because uh, you know, my uh, I was looking after my son full time. Mm. So uh, you know, I had these big brown eyes staring at me, saying, you know, Dad, feed me, look after me, clothe <laughs> yeah. me, send me to school, and yep. all that sort of stuff. Uh, so I couldn't do that on an acting, um, you know, wage. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, uh, you know, we wouldn't be living in the Tamaki electorate. That's for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> now, tell me a little bit about Morning Star, about the play itself. Yes. Well, M Morning Star is a really interesting piece. Um, to be honest with you, not a lot of people want to touch it. It actually was we. It was finished and did you not get the message from that <laughs> <laughs> it is a story about you know lucifer and archangels maybe that was the reason people were a little bit superstitious but right it was for, uh, um the draft the final draft was finished in 2011 believe it or not and it was workshopped it went to a couple of festivals with the aim of getting it on because it's a new zealand play it's a new zealand play written by albert bells i should make that clear yes so yes. albert bells um is a new zealand playwright he's written <clears throat> A ton of plays and he's just fantastic yeah um, mainly around um, Maori stories mm -hmm. but he's done a couple outside that like I've done one which was about Jack the Ripper that about three years Ooh, ago cool. that, was, that was cool yeah uh, and this one was about the Archangels okay and it's about um, it's not about the fall of Lucifer you, if you can imagine I mean, remember those stories you know Star Wars Darth Vader and then you go and find out what Anakin Skywalker was like or I have never seen a Star Wars movie. What are you talking about? I haven't. Who are you? I know, I know. <laughs> it's just, I'm just not about, into, I'm not into that sort of stuff. But the world is. You know that, don't you? I do know that. The, <laughs> I, the world is passing me by. Okay, something that Sell you, it you to might me, understand. Blair. Sell okay. it to me. Okay, well, can, you know The Wizard of Oz, right? You know I do story. know The Wizard okay, of Oz. Someone. There yeah. you go. Gosh, the, yeah, musicals. <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> um, well, there was the story of The Wicked Witch of the West. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Well, we, there's been some musicals called, I think, Wizard, and there's been yeah, a yeah, movie, the Wiz, Frank, yeah. and you find out about why she turned into the Wicked Witch of the West. Mm, okay. So this is a little bit about that. So Lucifer, why did he fall? Mm. So it's about a group of archangels that are a little One bit annoyed. One goes rogue. One goes rogue, and so does other parts of the family, because Daddy started a new family, which touched me in a way, because... Yeah. As a family lawyer, there are so many dysfunctional <laughs> families. There's the first family, and then a parent goes off, starts a second family, conflict arises. And that's how I've kind of moulded this. Okay, and so. you are Lucifer. I am Lucifer. Okay, um, so you're playing the badass of the production. <laughs> he's got issues, but I wouldn't say badass. He's, you know, there's some problems. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so it's not I, just pure evil. 
He's not pure evil. Right, you you okay. do well. Some may understand. I mean, um, some may not. But he's yeah. He's kind of spare at the moment. He's very cheeky. He's charismatic. He's all those things. I originally wasn't playing Lucifer. Uh, admittedly, I was oh. just producing and I was playing the angel Michael. But as we got into the rehearsal process, we discovered that he and Michael's a bit more stoic, mm. but more straight. Uh, we discovered uh, that I would probably suit Lucifer. And he would suit Michael. Now, and come I'm not on, Blair. Sure. You discovered this because it's your production company, <laughs> no, no. and you thought, hey, I'm not lead. happy with my role. I'm going to take that down. <laughs> but that's not actually how it transpired. It was actually, we got a, a director in, she's pretty sharp, and her name's Romy Hooper, and she watched the rehearsals. She said, nah, got to swap. Okay. So that's how well, it happened. Well, that's good to do that early. Yeah, anyway. I think yeah. we did it late. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We Don't tell me you'd learn all the lines and then you had to turn around to learn all the others. Pretty much. Ooh. In the last, uh, yeah, so the last three weeks has been full on. The only we good thing about that is that if Michael dries, you know all his lines. I do know them all. Mm. Yeah. So that's okay. Yes, yeah, so I guess vice versa as well. So at least you could whisper them to me, you know. A anybody else in the cast that, that we all know? So we've, yeah, we've managed to engage Bronwyn today. She's fantastic. And what we've also done, just to help out with some of the younger actors coming through, is that we've brought on some um, young actors from secondary school who are just outside of secondary school and they play the lesser angels which are kind of non-speaking roles but we have a, a main cast of about six and they are you know they're really good actors now one of these young cast members is your son Steele. that's yes, right isn't it and you've right. acted with him before have you directed him no i directed him last year okay. so when i started this um this company i directed a play called nigel and yeah. Uh, he had a small role in, in that and so I was just to try and give him some experience you know and uh, to try and get him a goal in life. <laughs> right, okay. Well, no, to he's be an out-of-work <laughs> actor. Yeah, yeah great yeah. goal. <laughs> yeah. So, but you know, he's enjoying it and... Do you enjoy like, acting with your son? Because I've only acted with Ash once and I really enjoyed it. It was it was really lovely. I, do, I mean, I love spending time with him yeah. and it's an opportunity to do that, particularly at an age where he's 21 now and he likes to spend time with his friends. And we the common th um, uh, thing that we've always had is you know, theatre, movies, because he'd been brought up, by the way, you mm. know, when, when, I, when he was born, I was on Shauna Street, so he was always on set, and you know, and anything else I did, so you want to be a pop star, yeah. he came on set there. Did he? Yeah, he did. Oh, God, how old <clears throat> would he have been then? He'd been uh, really gosh, young. It was 2005, wasn't it? 2004, he's probably about eight or nine. Yeah. But I'll tell you a funny story about that. I was, I was um, we were filming um, some of the rehearsal stuff for, for my song, <clears throat> and he saw that Dad was getting all the attention, and he had just had a little surgery just around here, for just a little minor surgery, and he had little stitches. And because Dad was getting all the attention, he ran on to see it, and in front of all the cameras, says, does anyone want to see my stitches? Because he wanted the attention. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, so, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, like so, father, like son. Uh, yeah, so it well, was... I do stalk you on Facebook, and mm. um, I've seen lots of photos of you and Steele, and you, you look like you've got a really great relationship. Yeah, well, um, yeah, a strong relationship. He's a lovely boy. Yeah, yeah. he's got good, good nature, good heart. Boy, good. I mean, he's twenty. He's twenty-one. Yeah, yeah. No, he's he's a lovely young man. I'm very proud of him. I have to say, yeah. Yeah, um, let's briefly talk about so you want to be a pop star because you and I were in <sighs> that together. Yes. That was the most terrifying experience I think of my life. Really? Oh yeah. You did so well though. Well, I remember you backstage. I mean, you were pretty. I, you seemed pretty calm. There was, I think, the first night. I remember you looked at me and, and we had this one look at each other and it was like, what am I doing? Why exactly. have we done this? Exactly. <laughs> you know, most jobs I do, I have that look. <laughs> I, I look at somebody and think, eh. Really? Um, but I read um, a critique of So You Want to Be a Pop Star with me in it. Um, and it said you about, were brave. said Louise Wallace <laughs> says, um, she cannot sing, but she looks terrific. And I was happy with that. I thought you. I thought you sang well. Oh, I, I didn't thought, really. I thought there was, yeah, no, there was. Um, there was a huskiness to your voice. Yeah. or something. <laughs> <laughs> that was called frog. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you now, always look great. So. Let's just briefly talk about Shortland Street. Yeah. And there's um, nothing brief about Shortland Street. It's the sort of rite of passage for so many young actors, isn't it? It is now. I th I, 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 when we started out, of course, because it was right at the beginning stages, we didn't think it was going to be that. No. Um, because we just, I mean, I remember when I was there in uh, 97, our ratings dropped. Really? And we were wondering whether we were going to stick it out. And so then we went through this uh, transition, actually it was 95, and they went through a transition of everything changed, the, the, the storylines got meatier, they had me sleeping with my sister. Mm. And weren't you paraplegic family. at one stage? I was a paraplegic for six months, and right. then they realised that... Uh, 
uh, well, six months in storyline, and they realized that um, if they wanted me to continue on, I You'd was going to walk have again. to walk again. <laughs> so it's one of those miraculous, you know, healing. But totally believable. Absolutely. Yeah, you yeah. know, I can walk. I can so walk. your spinal column just mended overnight. Yeah, it was all in my head. Mm. You know what I mean? Of course it yeah, was. Yes. Of course it was. <laughs> oh, but um, the thing about Shortland Street, because I was only in it very briefly, oh, for a few months anyway, That's playing right. a drunk cougar, which seems to be the role that I always get cast in. Hey, go with it. Yeah, Do I know. know I, mean? I, I gratefully accept Find your it. niche. I, exactly. And I don't really <laughs> care. But it's such a great... Um, exercise and discipline because you know people think that the the actors in Shortland Street you go out partying every night party you know and it, it's just such the life of a celebrity but you've got so many lines to learn in so little time That's right. that you you have to spend the every night weeknight learning your bloody lines don't you that's right so because if you don't know your lines there you're <coughs> Gone. Absolutely. Lines, I mean, that's, you know, rule 101. You know yeah. your lines, and particularly for that show. What is great about Shaun Street is that it's fast turnaround TV and you learn to do it right there and then, right? You know, in the moment. You that's know, for, right. And, uh, you, know, I'm, you know, things like you'd meet someone for the first time. You say, hi, uh, my name's Blair. Hi, I'm Sally. Okay, should we do this bed scene? Yeah, yeah. Say, mm. <laughs> so, you know, it's. I had you, that with Jono and Ben. I walked on set and I said, oh, hi, John. I said, hi. He said, oh, you have to pass John. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. And he was a bit sort of, I said, come on, John. You know, get you back into it, mate. So, <laughs> but you've got to do that. And it's weird. You've just got to commit to it. But it, look, I think it's a great learning. Um, it's a, learn, a, a good uh, learning medium for a lot of young actors going through because you learn that fast turnaround um, process. You learn well, discipline. You absolutely do. Mm. Um, I think a lot of actors who do a lot of theatre and sometimes like that long process, they tend to struggle a little with it. They've got to yeah. fine tune it because TV is a different genre. It's yeah, like, it is. Bum, bum. That's yeah, it. Yeah. Actually, I found when I went back to theatre and I had more space, I actually struggled for a little bit because I was so used to um, producing those emotions so quickly that, that giving myself time kind of freaked me out a little bit. I had to get back into that mould of, hey, I've got time. Great Talking TV. about stage work, um, in, a, in a nutshell, tell me your... Your best memory of being on stage and your worst memory? Oh, best memory and worst memory. Um, well, I'm hoping my worst memory is not playing Lucifer. Just want to. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm, a future I'm, projection. I'm, I'm, yeah. That wouldn't be good. Uh, best memory, probably an ego thing. When I played late, when I was in Ladies' Night down at the Court Theatre in Christchurch. That'd be fun. Yeah, yep. Yeah, just broken up from a relationship, from my marriage actually, and um, and I had Screaming Woman. For the next six weeks, the court theatre, yeah, got over it pretty quick. Right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, so that was one of my favourite memories, and I was down there with a couple of good mates. Uh, I don't know if you know Chris Hobbs. Yes. And yeah. Will. Um, Will and, Hall? No, Will. No, I've been Will Hall. I've been dangerous. Well, no, <laughs> no, 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 Will Wallace. So it was, um, yeah, it was a good time. And worse, gosh, I can't remember if I've had a really bad experience with theatre. I mean, I remember one time when I was a kid, St Kent's musical, Pirates Penzance. I jumped up and my pants split in front of everyone. I suppose that's it. Mm. I had I bad dreams remember, about theatre. Yeah, though. Mr. Moonshine um, playing a, this moonbeam in a, mu in a musical when I was nine years old, and I came out on stage and sort of went and just forgot completely what yeah. I was going to That was terrible. I uh, yeah. never got over that. No, it's terrible. It when is it happens. the worst feeling. The blank. And I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so. Hey, Blair, we've got, to, we've got to finish it off, mate, but you've been so fantastic. Thank you so much for coming in and talking to me, and I look forward to seeing Morningstar. Well, thank you so much, and uh, I look forward to seeing you there. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see what's going on in theatre here and in Oz. If you fancy a bit of improv, head to Circa Theatre in Welly for some theatre sports from the improvisers. For drama, catch The Atom Room, which opens 9th of June. This is the world premiere by Wellington playwright Philip Braithwaite, set 150 years into the future and featuring a unique pre-show virtual reality prologue, which sounds pretty cool. Tuesday, June 5, sees Don Juan opening at the Q Theatre in Auckland, about which one critic said was so effing funny, I nearly died laughing. It features a riotous retelling of the story of Don Juan, the original master of seduction, and puts the audience in the centre of the action with a bar serving drinks and table seating as per cabaret, which sounds like a bloody good night out to me. And of course, don't forget Morningstar at the Pump House from 7th of June, starring Blair Strang, and ATC's The Cherry Orchard with the lovely Alison Bruce opening mid-June. 
And don't forget, if you're crossing the ditch in the next couple of weeks, Sydney Theatre Company is presenting St Joan by George Bernard Shaw at the Roslyn Packer Theatre at the Wharf and Stephen Sondheim's musical Assassins is opening at the Opera House on June 7. She's one of our most recognised faces on telly, the stage and in the movies. She starred in the award-winning series Being Eve, appeared in The World's Fastest Indian, played a mother of gods in The Almighty Johnsons and she's currently in rehearsal for the Auckland Theatre Company's The Cherry Orchard, which opens 12th June at the Waterfront Theatre. Welcome, Alison Bruce. Thank you. You know, I've always wanted to meet you. Have you? Yeah, I really have. I, I really have been a hero of mine. Oh, my God. That's amazing. I Thank absolutely you. absolutely loved you in Mercy Peak. Oh, yeah, that was... Yeah, that was a that was a lovely show. Actually, that was the most fabulous role you played. It was really yeah, it was warm nice. and it was a grown up too. Which was, was it was my first sort of proper grow, being a grown up was fantastic, yeah. fantastic show. And you won an award for that, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Mm. I, yeah, I I won um, best supporting actor yeah. um, a couple of times. Well, no, <laughs> no. How, how yeah. many um, series was that? I think there were. four. Four, I think. Yeah, it's a while ago now. Lucky on yeah. you being in four series. Absolutely, and I learned a huge amount working on that. It was great. I really, uh, yeah. Was that about what? Fifteen years ago, probably. 10 yeah, it years would ago? be. No, yeah. it would be. Uh, it, I was pregnant with my daughter Sugar in the last or second to last, second to last series. Okay. She was born in. Hmm. 2002. Oh, well, yeah. that would be the icing on the cake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember Wadley being on set, you know, being this massive thing. Yeah. Going. Yeah. No, well, look, let's talk about the cherry orchard. Mm. Chekhov. You know, whenever I sort of, somebody says, oh, do you want to come to a Chekhov play? I'm like, oh, and they're like oh. I don't know. Do I want to sit there and get piles for three hours? Yeah, absolutely. But I'm here to be told, no, 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 you're wrong, you're wrong, you will love this. Tell me about the magic and the secret of Chekhov. Why is he known as one of the greatest playwrights of all time? Um, oh, well, I think, uh, d just to speak to what you said before about do getting I want to go piles. to Chekhov and, and getting piles, yeah. I think that sometimes uh, Chekhov or Ibsen or any of those, or Shakespeare, mm -hmm. any of those uh, mm -hmm. classic playwrights, um, I think we have an expectation that we'll be a little bit bored yes. when we watch it. Yes. Like we know we're watching art. Yeah. And or that we think we won't understand oh, it. Oh, we won't it's understand bit, you know, it. And it's a bit up here. It's, um, and that it's not uh, accessible. Or if it is accessible, it's a bit dull. Right, yep. So, and I think, um, I think Chekhov is perceived like that because quite often he is, his plays are presented as tragedies, but nothing much really happens. Okay. And so people go, oh, I don't really get it. Mm. But actually they're really funny because mm. there's studies of, um, he was a doctor. Okay. So he saw people and all the time and he, and so he um, wrote these people without judgment. It, it, it's like- So he, he was a great observer. Great observer. Yeah. And, but also in his time before he was writing, theatre was quite, um, presented and um, uh, not at all like real life and this was quite stagey yeah mm. and this is the first time that people s were like looking at themselves so it was on almost stage. like reality TV of that time totally yeah totally and it was uh, shocking people didn't know what to do with it when they saw it okay um, I think so are you playing like with the cherry orchard then are you you're picking out the more funny bits perhaps that I don't think it's about picking out the more funny bits, but I think it's about um, actually honouring that they are all really idiosyncratic, okay. disastrous people. Right. Which we all are. Of actually, course we are. You course know, we are. Everyone's a bit of a disaster on the inside. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Well, well, what is the story in a 30-second sound grab of the cherry orchard? So it's a story of a... Um, a an estate, a yes. huge, like we've said in, in the Hawke's Bay in the 70s, a huge sheep station, okay. landed gentry, it's been in the family for generations and has now been run into the ground by um, uh, my character Lulu and her brother Leo, um, who inherited it but have no interest in farming, don't know how to look after it at all. And It's quite a common story. Well, yeah, mm. exactly. Yeah. And... And they keep, they're like an ostrich. They're both like ostriches with their heads in the sand. And the, ho the whole place is to be auctioned to pay off their debts. And it just comes close. It's like watching a train wreck, yeah. slowly. Is it your character that has a, a younger lover? 
Has had. Well, has, has had. had. So she's quite, um, she's feckless. She's just come back from Paris. Mm. She tried to kill herself because okay. her lover right. yeah. fell in love with As someone else after he'd stolen everything from her. But okay. she's really, also, she's also, like, she's really led by her heart. Right. You know, so she's not, she doesn't think things through much. Okay. She just follows her feelings here or there. And how much of that character is you? Quite a lot. <laughs> yeah. You're saying this with yes. great confidence. Yes, I understand this. Absolutely. Well. I can see that you're thinking, yeah, oh, yeah this is pretty much Absolutely. me, really. Absolutely. I think, you know, she's the one who gives the money away to, you know, I'm, yeah, we're quite alike. Now, you yeah. mentioned before that you're setting it in the, or that Colin's setting it in the in the Hawke's Bay in the 70s or whatever. Mm. How do you feel about the sort of modernisation mm. of, of these classics? Because I went to a seminar um, about theatre a couple of weeks ago and I was one of the youngest there and that was pretty <laughs> sad because it. the others were like in the sort of 70s <laughs> and they were saying, oh my God, you don't need to modernise it yeah. and you know, you, you put in all the F word and the C bomb and blah, blah, blah and we hate it and all the yeah. rest of it. Why does that need to happen? How do you feel about that? I think it's really legitimate to modernise it cause, because if you, if you are staying true to the playwright's intent in their story, because particularly with something like this, it, if you think that he was presenting people with their real people, mm. not these fantasy caricatures, then by bringing it into a modern era, it's so much more accessible for okay. us. And we can recognise those people. And also, we're going, how do you make, you know, the play is set in Russia with the, um, when the change, you know, after the revolution and the serfdom are coming up and taking power. So we went, what can we find that's an equivalent in our history? And we kind of, uh, Colin thought. Well, who are the serfs in Hawke's Bay? Well, if, yeah, <laughs> well, was, we're looking at the great in New Zealand. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, and he, uh, he went, well, kind of the Maori Renaissance in the 1970s. And okay. I remember that's the first time I became aware of, you know, Bastion Point. Absolutely. Big hikoi. And so it's like, that's what's coming. Okay. It's like, this is coming. The balance is shifting. And I suppose for younger audience members who perhaps don't know much about Chekhov and don't know their expectations, it's a yeah. good way for them to identify um, with classic theatre. Absolutely. It? And uh, Colin was talking just yesterday saying, if you see Chekhov overseas in Europe, it will always be presented in a contemporary way. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, tell me briefly about the other cast members. You've got some pretty big names in there. I yep. mean, Ian Mune, he's an absolute legend, um, isn't he? Yes, uh, he's a gem. Mune, I, I, I mean, he's he just makes me laugh just looking at him. He doesn't really him. have to do anything. No, he doesn't. And in fact, the show will stop, basically. Yeah, he'll walk out there, he'll mumble something, and the whole show will stop. I mean, I was taking some up. stills the other day of you guys, and, and he walked out, and just the look on his face. Yeah. He sort of looks like this friendly gnome. Yeah. He does. Yeah. He's well. He's a legend. Isn't he is he? an absolute I legend. I love him. I think it must be incredible working with him. It's well, wonderful. He obviously thinks it's incredible working with you. But. Well, we're really lucky to have him. But also, you know, he's got. He's actually a wonderful. Um, I mean, he's really funny. But also, he's a great teacher. He's got great. Yes. You know, he'll just say. Remember in the read through, we were talking, and he said something about how things were played, and I went. Oh, ka-ching, that's, yeah. This is a very mine. big cast. It's huge. I yeah. don't know what the number, I don't know offhand, oh, maybe a dozen or something. It sort of seems to be about ten people, but, you know, for somebody who, who has a theatre company like me, I, I we just couldn't afford to no, do well, a play with ten people. It's massive. Exactly. It's huge. And, yeah, it, uh, it's expensive for them, I'm sure, but mm. worth it. We're so good. But, um, so there's a lovely Andy Granger, who yes, lots of theatre fabulous. people know, who yeah. I love. He's like a brother in a way to me. And of course, um, your partner, Neil Ray, oh, yeah. he's the, the lead in Brokenwood Mysteries. Have yeah. you been on Brokenwood? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. yet. Okay, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's a big yeah. sign. Yeah, that's a big sign, that's right. right. Um, and so is that tricky, having a partner who's an actor? Sometimes, mm. yeah. And sometimes like if he gets a call from his agent, you sort of... Yeah, that's, yeah, mm. it's a bit, like, I think the good side of it is that you understand the industry. It's very hard if one person is getting all the work and the other person Incredible. I, I would think that would be incredibly difficult. Yeah. I don't think that I could be married to an actor. Yeah. It, it's I don't tough. Know. It yeah. is. It is You're tough. Not, uh, yeah. There's only one star in our household. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that, it's just that side, really, the thing of, um, because you're so, Have you such acted a with him? Uh, a tiny, tiny bit like a tiny bit in a, um, in a uh, drama, a TV drama. Um, 
but not anything substantial. But we'd like to mm. at some point, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So tell me about some of the, the, what's your worst thing that's ever happened to you on stage? Oh my God, what is the worst thing that's ever happened? I mean, I the, whole thing, the whole thing is that every actor dries, don't they? Drying is the worst. It's like the world, it is the, worst. the earth opens up. It's like, like you know, when, it's like, it's like when you sort of, the, your world drops out of your bottom, doesn't it? <laughs> Well, it's yeah, it does. Sort of is. It's, and you can there's, feel it's, it's a like there's void and there's no, nothing there. But, and, but, and but the thing about that is, on stage, you can see it in somebody's eyes. Totally. You can totally see it within pretty much half a second. So you've got one or two seconds to either help them out or think, "You're on your own, buddy." Well, Lee Grant, who maybe some you know older people would remember, her oh, great Dwayne of the Mercury Theatre. Yeah. <laughs> she said, "I remember her saying." Somebody dries on stage, darling. Never be the first to speak because they'll think it was you. So, <laughs> oh, well, that, that's a very okay. old school way to think. But I am so happy to have been rescued by friends so course, many times. But you that's know. the collegial thing about being on absolutely. stage. And you, you have to help somebody else unless, yeah. unless you've got absolutely no idea and then you just stare at each other. I mean, one of my absolute favourite stories about theatre um, is uh, with Judy Dench. And um, and she was, you know, acting with somebody really, really famous, and they they forgot their lines. They forgot a, pretty much an entire scene, an entire act, and she just said all their lines for them. <sighs> and you know, a panic attack like that can happen to anybody. It doesn't Absolutely. matter how famous Absolutely. you are, Absolutely. or how unfamous you are, Absolutely. and you have to be prepared for that. And some but people are really, really good at it. Some people are really good at knowing how to rescue things, and other people are like possum in the headlights. I know. You know. I know. Yeah. So. But you see, I'm anticipating that I, I said drying on stage, but you didn't actually say that you, you had. No, but I have dried on stage right. plenty well, we of have. times. And I mean, I'm th I think that's the actor's biggest fear, isn't it? It's like, it is. what if I have no idea what comes next? <laughs> and sometimes it's like you just leave your body at that point. That's right. <laughs> like An out of world body experience. experience. Out of body experience. Really. Yeah. You, you could be up the back of the theatre looking at you slowly dying. Totally. Mm. Absolutely. And, and what about great moments? What's the best moment for you about being on stage? Oh, my God. Um, oh. The curtain th call? Th no, yeah, it's over. We made it. Yeah. Um, I, I think sometimes there's those moments when you feel the audience absolutely with you. Yes. And because I think as an actor, even though you, you are completely in it, you, it's also a bit of you that has to be outside monitoring what's happening. So when, I think when you feel that connection with the audience and that they're really coming with you, I think that's the magic that you want every time. It's so intangible. Well, I can tell you a moment when I thought the audience was totally with you, and that was in Nell Gwynn, with the, ah. the character that you played in Nell Gwynn. You were so funny. Oh, they were and great. so fabulous. And the audience <laughs> just absolutely loved you. It was so, so nice to do some comedy, actually. Oh, comedy yeah, was just I really like I comedy. Have to say I only really like doing comedy now. I just like <laughs> yeah. making people laugh. Me too. I just, just want to have fun. Selfish. Same. <laughs> just want to have fun and um, just be with a great group of actors, the mm. collegial environment, and and yeah, making an audience laugh is just the best. Isn't feeling. it wonderful? It really is. Yeah, absolutely. Probably, probably better than making them cry. Well, I quite like making them cry too. Yeah, but, I you know, sort of but do I too. am sort of I re at work. I really, I'm just. I most importantly, I want to have fun That's now when right. I go to work. That's right. Yeah. Well, hopefully one day we can work together. That would be great. It would be really, really good. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Hey, so lovely to meet you and talk to you, and um, can't wait to see the cherry orchard. Yeah, great. Thank you. Finally tonight. A couple of years ago, I went to a fantastic play by the Sydney Theatre Company called The Present. It starred Oscar winner Kate Blanchett and the fabulous Richard Roxburgh from the hit Aussie show Rake. Now, as it was an adaptation of a little-known Chekhov play, I expected to find it pretty much hard going. But actually, it was hilarious and incredibly uplifting, even though it ended with the classic Chekhovian device of someone being shot. Now. Here's an example of how theatre is subjective. The play went on to be transferred to Broadway, and here it is critiqued by some dude called Rex Reed. He says, I went to the Ethel Barrymore Theatre and suffered through a relentless three-hour pile of noisy, pointless and pretentious junk called the present. It gives audiences a rare chance to waste some time in the same room with two-time Oscar winner Kate Blanchett. Gallons of vodka are consumed, rifles, shotguns and semi-automatics are fired with nerve-jolting regularity. 
The first and second acts before intermission drag on for almost two hours, during which an entire dinner is consumed and a few characters fell asleep, joining audience members who were already snoring. The play is so bad it seems to be in an unknown language. And so this critique goes on and on and on, and it doesn't get any better, which just goes to show that even an Oscar-winning actress can get a crap review. Cheers and good night. Thank you.